Today we are going to talk about asthma from A to Z. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory condition of the lungs characteristic of airway hyperresponsiveness and the reversible narrowing of the airways. The airway consists of the trachea divided into left and right main bronchus, then divided into multiple bronchioles. Bronchioles are lined by the epithelium and surrounded by lamina propria and smooth muscle layer. Clinical anatomy. When smooth muscles contract, the airways narrow and the airways widen when the muscles relax. Receptors. Beta-2 adrenergic receptors. Activation of these receptors by molecules like adrenaline or beta-agonist medications, for example albuterol, leads to bronchodilation by relaxing the smooth muscles in the bronchioles. Muscarinic receptors, M3 subtype. Stimulation of these receptors by acetylcholine or other muscarinic agonists causes bronchoconstriction. In asthma management, muscarinic antagonists are used. Histamine receptors. Histamine acts on receptors in the bronchioles, primarily H1 receptors, causing bronchoconstriction and increased mucus production, leading to airway narrowing and potential breathing difficulties. Adenosine receptors. Adenosine, when it binds to its receptors on bronchioles, can cause bronchoconstriction and increased mucus production, contributing to airway narrowing. When allergens enter the bronchioles, Dendritic cells phagocytose them and subsequently present the antigens to type 2 helper cells. Type 2 helper cells release interleukin-4 and interleukin-5. Interleukin-4 activates plasma cells, B cells, prompting the release of IgE antibodies. The IgE antibodies activate mast cells, triggering mast cell degranulation and the subsequent release of histamine and leukotrienes. Because of IgE involvement, this is identified as a type 1 hypersensitive reaction. Interleukin-5 binds to eosinophils, prompting the release of leukotrienes, cytokines, and proteases. In response, smooth muscles contract, narrowing the airways and increasing mucus production. Further increases vascular permeability, causing more influx of immune cells, especially eosinophils. Release proteases cause structural damage and fibrosis. These minute irreversible damages accumulate over time, leading to airway remodeling. Pathology of remodel airways. Increased airway thickness. Hypertrophy of smooth muscles. Increased glandular tissue. Increased vascularization. Increased thickness of basement membrane. Causes of asthma. The etiology of asthma remains unclear, attributed to a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Genetic factors. High risk association with a family history of asthma. Identification of specific genes linked to asthma. Significant involvement of genetic factors in childhood onset asthma. Environmental factors. Hygiene hypothesis. Reduced exposure to environmental allergens is linked to increased asthma risk. Role of environmental factors predominant in late onset asthma. Intrinsic and extrinsic asthma. Extrinsic asthma is primarily triggered by allergens like pollens, dust mites, and mold. On the other hand, intrinsic asthma is provoked by factors such as weather conditions, infections, and stress. Extrinsic asthma is more prevalent than intrinsic asthma, typically manifesting early in life, while intrinsic asthma tends to develop later. In cases of extrinsic asthma, elevated IgE levels are commonly observed, contrasting with lower IgE levels in intrinsic asthma. Additionally, Extrinsic asthma often displays significant eosinophilia compared to the milder eosinophilic presence in intrinsic asthma. Skin prick tests yield positive results for allergens in extrinsic asthma and negative findings in intrinsic asthma. Extrinsic asthma shows a strong familial association, while intrinsic asthma lacks such a clear link with family history. It's notable that intolerance to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, is less frequent in extrinsic asthma when compared to intrinsic asthma. Triggers of asthma allergens, pollen, dust mites, pet dander, mold spores, and certain foods. Respiratory infections, viral infections such as colds, flu, and sinus infections. Airborne irritants, irritants like smoke, cigarette smoke or wood smoke, strong odors, chemical fumes, air pollution, or strong perfumes. Physical activity, Physical exertion or exercise can trigger asthma. Weather conditions, cold air, dry air, or sudden temperature changes. Emotional factors, 
stress and strong emotions can sometimes act as triggers for asthma symptoms. Medications. Aspirin or nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. Gastroesophageal reflux disease. Acid reflux. Diagnosis of asthma. History plays an important role in the diagnosis of asthma. Dry cough, chest tightness, and shortness of breath are the main symptoms. During examination, if the patient is symptomatic, wheezing sounds can be heard, and they may exhibit difficulty in completing sentences. Upon auscultation, you may hear raunchy, and during percussion, there may be hyper-resonant percussion notes. Investigation. Pulmonary function testing is considered the gold standard. If symptomatic, the FEV1, forced expiratory volume in the first second, will be low. After nebulization with albuterol or salbutamol, there should be a 12% increase in FEV1. Bronchoprovocation test. Here, a small dose of methacholine, muscarinic agonist, is injected after conducting the pulmonary function test and then repeating the test. There should be a 20% or more reduction in FEV1. This test carries a risk of acute severe asthma attacks and is not conducted frequently. Other supportive investigations. Complete blood count, high eosinophil count in extrinsic asthma. Chest x-ray is usually normal but important to exclude other pathology, especially in adult onset asthma. Skin prick test, positive in extrinsic asthma. Serum IgE testing is conducted post-asthma diagnosis, primarily for suspected atopic asthma with recurrent exacerbations, frequent hospitalizations, or when considering immune therapy or biologics, peak flow meter, used in monitoring the asthma and identifying the severity of flare-ups, but not for the diagnosis of asthma. Sputum microscopy of asthma patient. Churchman spirals are a microscopic finding in the sputum of asthmatics. They are spiral-shaped mucus plugs from sub-epithelial mucus gland ducts of the bronchi. charcot Leiden crystals are composed of an eosinophilic lysophospholipus binding protein. Sputum microscopy is not performed routinely. Goals of asthma management. Optimize the control of asthma symptoms. Minimize the risk of asthma exacerbations. Minimize the adverse effects of drug therapy. The main component of management, reduce exposure to triggers, patient education, monitoring the changes of lung functions, pharmacologic therapy, classification and management of asthma, mild intermittent asthma, day symptoms maximum two per week, night symptoms maximum two per month, FEV one more than 80%. Management, National Asthma Education and Prevention Program recommends SABA, short-acting beta agonists as needed. Global Initiative for Asthma, GINA, recommends low-dose ICS for motorol as needed, or as an alternative, low-dose ICS whenever SABA used, mild persistence asthma. Day symptoms, three, six per week, night symptoms maximum four per month, mild limitation of activity, FEV, one is more than 80%. Management, National Asthma Education and Prevention Program recommends low-dose ICS daily and SABA as needed or as an alternative low-dose ICS SABA or ICS plus SABA as needed. Global Initiative for Asthma, GINA, recommend low-dose ICS for moderol as needed or as an alternative, the use of low-dose ICS daily and SABA as needed. In GINA, guidelines for both intermittent asthma and mild persistent asthma. Recommend the use of low-dose corticosteroids with formoterol. These novel approaches seek to treat the chronic airway inflammation that is thought to be present even in intermittent asthma and to reduce the risk of severe and potentially life-threatening asthma attacks that can occur in patients with intermittent asthma who rely on treatment with a SABA alone. Moderate persistence asthma. Daily day symptoms, more than four night symptoms per month. Moderate limitation of activity, FEV, one is between 80%, 60%. Management. National Asthma Education and Prevention Program recommends low-dose ICS formoterol as maintenance and reliever therapy, or as an alternative, the use of medium-dose ICS daily and SABA as needed. Global Initiative for Asthma, GINA, recommend low-dose ICS formoterol as maintenance and reliever therapy preferred, or as an alternative use of low-dose ICS-LABA combination daily and SABA as needed. 
Both guidelines recommend low-dose ICS plus fermoterol as the first line in moderate persistent asthma, severe persistent asthma. Symptoms throughout the day, night awakens, severe activity limitation, FEV1 is less than 60% management. National Asthma Education and Prevention Program recommends medium-dose ICS for moderal as maintenance and reliever therapy, preferred, or medium-dose ICS LABA daily or medium-dose ICS plus LAMA daily, or medium-dose ICS daily plus anti-leukotrien and SABA as needed. Global Initiative for Asthma, GINA, recommend medium-dose ICS for moderal as maintenance and reliever therapy, preferred, or medium-dose ICS LABA daily and SABA, or possibly add on LAMA or switch to ICS LAMA LABA. Both guidelines recommend medium-dose ICS plus fermoterol as the first line in severe persistent asthma. In summary, GINA guidelines recommend the use of low-dose ICS plus fermoterol as needed for both intermittent and mild persistent asthma. Both guidelines recommend the use of low-dose ICS plus formaterlo as a maintenance and reliever for moderate persistent asthma in first-line treatment. Both guidelines recommend the use of medium-dose ICS plus formaterlo as a maintenance and reliever for moderate persistent asthma in first-line treatment. Smart therapy stands for single maintenance and reliever therapy. It is sometimes also called MART therapy for maintenance and reliever therapy. Smart therapy is for patients with moderate to severe asthma who need a combination of treatments. Smart therapy allows people with asthma to use just one medication to control asthma symptoms. Currently, this combination is available in two medications, butsonide, formoterol, momidazone, formoterol. Stay updated with the latest in medicine. Subscribe to our channel for comprehensive videos covering the latest updates in the field.